The Murfreesboro Gateway is an area that sits on approximately 360 acres located east of Thompson Lane and north of the Stones River. The area is strategically located and benefits from the interchange at I-24 and Manson Pike. In early 2004, the City Council adopted the Gateway Design Overlay District regulations, which impose additional zoning requirements in this area. It has been almost a decade since the regulations were put into place, and according to Planning Director Joseph Adelot, it is time the City reviews the GDO. The GDO regulations were adopted in January of 2004. It's hard to believe 10 years have passed since we adopted those regulations and all that has developed on Melkerson and Parkway during that time. GDO means Gateway Design Overlay District and the Gateway Design Overlay District is an overlay zone that we have placed on the area in the uh, Gateway area and, and the Gateway area is the area along Medical Center Parkway actually on both sides of Interstate 24 in the area around Fortress and Manson Pike then eastward along the Medical Center Parkway uh, all the way to uh, Memorial Boulevard. The uh, street uh, is, is basically the spine of the district the Medical Center Parkway. Some of it is uh, some distance from Medical Center Parkway. For instance, the uh, property all south of the Wilkerson Pike, all the way to Interstate 24, uh, almost but not quite to Old Fort Parkway. It's the area that was undeveloped at the time that uh, we built the Medical Center Parkway. It includes land that the city formerly owned, I uh, still own some of it, uh, along the uh, Medical Center Parkway east of Thompson Lane in the area around the uh, uh, hospital and the, uh, the office, um, uh, the medical office buildings that are developed out there. It includes the avenues. It includes the uh, Chamber of Commerce vi uh, uh, building and their Welcome Center. Uh, it includes several of the banks we see out there, a lot of the new restaurants. We uh, dubbed that, that area the Gateway back when we were uh, constructing the Medical Center uh, Parkway and began to look at the uh, zoning for that area and the uh, type of uh, development we would see it. We realized that that was going to be a new gateway into the city. So we called it the gateway and we call it the overlay district because we have overlaid additional and more stringent zoning requirements upon the uh, property out there. Uh, for instance, a lot of the area is zoned commercial, but we also require a design review. We uh, scrutinize the uh, uh, the developments to a, what I would say a higher degree, but also with an expectation on architecture and on design. A change is being proposed at this point uh, for a couple of reasons. And, and one of them is, I think there is a, uh, and the first reason is, it's, it's, it's an update of the gateway design regulations. And, and the first reason is that we want to make them work better. We've had 10 years of experience as a city, as a staff, as a planning commission, and also as a, uh, a building industry and as uh, stakeholders using these regulations. I feel that we can do a better job with them. We've have a, uh, it's time to take stock in what we've got and look for ways to do it better. I don't want in any form to back off on the quality of developments that we're having, uh, but what I do want to do is to help the people who use these regulations to understand better what we want and how to do it. Uh, a very good, for instance, uh, some of the requirements in the um, Gateway Design Overlay District regulations are not in a checklist format. And the poor uh, guy back at the office of the uh, engineer or architect, he's trying to figure out, well, what am I supposed to do? How are my plans supposed to look? What are they supposed to contain? What format should it be in? Uh, how do I need to communicate with my plan? Uh, bear in mind that a plan, a site plan or a building plan, is a form of communication. The site plan is used to communicate to the city what someone intends to do. We use it, the site plan as a, a, a basically a, a permission slip. If we approve your site plan, we're giving you permission to do what you have shown us. Uh, the uh, site plan is also something that when the plan commission looks at it, they know what they're approving. So it's important that a site plan be done properly and also that whoever is preparing it know what they're doing. So one of the efforts is to uh, make the uh, regulations, the requirements, more user friendly and lay out on a step-by-step -step basis what is expected. Not changing the requirement as much as improving the format so that the poor guy back at the office, who, the intern if you will, who's operating a computer, uh, understands what he's supposed to be doing without having to come down to the city and make multiple calls. The, the, one of the unfortunate things we, we see happen is 
that this inexperienced person who may have never done any work in Murfreesboro uh, comes and he is interpreting the regulations, but he never calls. He doesn't talk. So we're trying to give him a communication so that he knows what he's supposed to do a little bit better. The Gateway area has uh, several different zoning classifications. The area to the east of Thompson Lane, and this includes a lot of the area around the hospital, it's zoned light industrial. Uh, interestingly, it's zoned light industrial because it was zoned industrial prior to it being annexed into the city. A uh, hospital was permitted. We've never gone back and changed that. Uh, uh, from the uh, interim classification it came in. So it's still zoned light industrial. The area along Thompson Lane, all the way from Wilkinson Pike almost to uh, Old Fort Parkway, it also is zoned light industrial for the same reason. The area west of Thompson Lane over to uh, Interstate 24 uh, is a little bit different. On the south side of uh, Medical Center Parkway, um, all of that's zoned commercial highway. Uh, on the north side, it's uh, Office General and a little bit of Commercial Highway, a little bit of RS-15. It's, it's a mix. Some of those zoning lines were established before the Medical Center Parkway was built. And when the Medical Center Parkway came through, it, it sort of um, hit the uh, zoning lines in a funny way. So it's, it's got some, in it, some remainders that, that w the city really needs to go back and uh, maybe uh, straighten out a little bit. On the uh, west side of Interstate 24 in the Gateway District. Uh, most of that area is zoned commercial highway. Some of it is zoned uh, multifamily. Uh, some of it is zoned RS-15. Now also uh, something else. One of the things we're looking at as a companion to updating the Gateway Design Overlay Districts is something that I call the Mixed Use District that we're contemplating. One of the things I mentioned earlier is about the zoning that's in place. Uh, for instance, the OG district for a lot of the land along the Medical Center Parkway. It's predictable that if the city doesn't take a little bit of initiative, we will look at a series of rezonings over time that will be for the existing zones uh, or as planned developments. And that may not be the best thing to do. One of the things that we have found uh, and one of the developments that I really admire is the uh, Gateway Village adjacent to the hospital. I admire it because it has an excellent design. It is uh, LEED certified. It has uh, uh, a very good and innovative stormwater collection system. The architecture is harmonious with the hospital and where it's at. It includes residential uses as well as commercial uses. So there's residential in the upper stories and in the, uh, commercial in the bottom stories. And it even has a parking garage. So it's, it's a, a true mixed use development. Well, the, the OG zone does not allow a mixed-use development. The commercial highway does not allow mixed-use development. One of the things I'm contemplating with the, the, this initiative is to investigate uh, how the public, how the stakeholders, how the property owners uh, would react to the prospect of allowing a mixed-use district to be created that would have some application in that area, uh, in the area uh, that the city owns, that continues to own, uh, but also along the uh, Medical Center Parkway, uh, north of uh, Medical Center Parkway, and south of it. Uh, I wouldn't want this district to apply to areas that are not in the Gateway Overlay District, because I think that when you look at the mixed-use development, it demands a high degree of scrutiny. Uh, and the Gateway Design Overlay District allows that. But uh, that area demands that we, we maybe broaden the possibilities that are not allowed uh, in the OG district. The uh, changes include the, the uh, making a whole lot better checklist. We're looking at improving what is required and putting that into a checklist format. We're looking at some uh, editing. We're looking at some format changes. Uh, as a companion with the text, we're also looking at some changes in some of the districts. Some of the GDO uh, three areas that are owned by the city, for instance, the uh, Oak Shopping Center that were formerly owned by the city that we saw, the city sold, are in the GDO three right now because they were formerly owned by the city. But really, that is misplaced. It probably should be in GDO one because the Oak Shopping Center is not the same as the hospital. The uh, another uh, effort will be to take some of the area along uh, Thompson Lane on the south end the area more towards Old Fort Parkway that's in GDO2, make that into GDO1. Um, part of the difference is the, uh, the height requirements. We've already issued some uh, height variances in that area, so it would probably be the right thing to do. 
The uh, third thing is uh, this mixed use district. We're looking at creating a mixed use district as a companion with this and then mapping it. And, that, and the area, the fourth thing would be the area uh, around that would be zoned to the mixed use district that we're considering. And a lot of that area is around uh, Thompson Lane and Medical Center Parkway. Right now we're trying to get word out about what we were doing. Uh, one of the first initiatives in August, we'll be having a, uh, what I call a neighborhood slash stakeholder meeting. We're going to invite uh, anybody that's interested to come and uh, spend some time with the uh, planning staff uh, to look at the regulations, to uh, look at the maps, to uh, discuss with us what they, uh, uh, how they view these regulations, the existing zone as well as what we're proposing. Uh, so uh, that will be on August 19th, it will be at 5 o'clock to 7 o'clock at the, I think that's the correct time, uh, at the uh, Chamber of Commerce uh, building on uh, Medical Center Parkway. So uh, we look forward to seeing anybody that's interested in participating in. We'll be putting some signs up, we'll be advertising in the newspaper, we'll be having some things posted on the city's uh, website, uh, and there'll be some more uh, spots on TV uh, uh, about this subject. Before any regulations will get adopted, there will have to be a public hearing with the Planning Commission, and it will come back to the Planning Commission for study. Uh, I have made a staff report to the Planning Commission about this, and there seem to be a lot of interest by the Planning Commission members to, to move forward with, uh, with this. We've, I really want public input because the, the public is, uh, has always been a big part of the Gateway. When we developed the original Gateway Design Overlay District, we reached out to the public. Uh, we had their participation. Uh, we made a big effort to have the, uh, the participation of the people who were interested, who live in this area, who own property in the area, who are just interested in the city's future. So we're, we're going to continue that with the, this uh, initiative. We, we don't want to, to exclude anybody from it uh, in the process. Now the Planning Commission will have a public hearing at some point, and the Planning Commission will make a recommendation to the City Council. Uh, as with any kind of change in zoning or uh, text or amendments to the zone ordinance, there will be another public hearing at the City Council before it considers an ordinance to adopt it. So uh, we will have at least two public hearings and uh, we already have a neighborhood meeting scheduled. We will be inviting uh, comments from the public to post on our website. We'll be making that place available on our website. So, uh, and it will be, I think uh, Ms. Logan and I discussed having a place on the city's website called the Spotlight that she'll be uh, putting it on. And we'll be asking for people to send us emails. We'll be asking people to send us comments in writing uh, and, or just uh, phone calls. All right, the city's zoning map is available on the city's website at www.murfreesboro10.gov. Uh, just go to the, the city's uh, GIS uh, department uh, on there and it, with a couple of clicks you can find it. Uh, I find it fairly easy to use and, and most of the people who do business with the city now you go there to find it. Uh, a copy of the city's uh, zoning map is also available in the office of the planning department here in City Hall. And the GDO regulations are part of the city's zone ordinance. The uh, zone ordinance is available on the city's website and you'll find that in the uh, planning, uh, under the planning department. The uh, ordinance is also available at the uh, front desk in the uh, planning department. And if someone wants to stop by, we always have a staff person again who's uh, ready to help uh, someone to understand how the property is zoned and how a particular regulation may apply to it. This is one of those uh, type of uh, efforts that I, I find to be a very um, interesting and intriguing as a planner. This is the kind of thing that shapes the physical environment over time. It's something that uh, basically we, we, the city will live with for some period of time before we, we make changes. Yes, we can make changes anytime we want to. If we see something that is wrong or needs to be adjusted, we can. But a lot of times we live with regulations. Uh, so uh, this, is a, this is a good time to take stock in what we've got. 10 years is a good anniversary. As I drive the gateway, I'm very proud of what I see. I see a lot of development that's taking place, and I know that there's a lot more to come uh, because I, I know uh, in my meetings with uh, people who own property and who are interested in coming to Murfreesboro to develop, that there are some big things on the horizon from, from Murfreesboro, and a lot of that's going to be in the Gateway area. Uh, the city has some corporate headquarters sites, and eventually those sites will be uh, purchased, and we will see them filled with something that will be, I believe, will be dramatic and will be very appropriate for Murfreesboro and probably be part of what will raise the bar. 
And speaking of raising the bar, I believe that the Gateway Design Overlay District has in fact raised the bar in Murfreesboro. The Gateway Design Overlay District has been a collection of good examples. And now, when someone comes to develop anywhere in Murfreesboro, we have an example that they have to compete with uh, in some form. Even if they're on the other side of town, they have to compete with the Gateway. And there is a, uh, a realization of that among the developers in the community. So even though the Gateway design regulations don't apply on South Church Street or on Memorial Boulevard, most of the developers that come here are using that as the example and as the standard, and they know our expectations. So I believe the Gateway Design Overlay District and the Gateway has been an overwhelming success for the city, and I'm very proud of it. The Planning Department is holding an open house on August 19th at 5 p.m. at the Rutherford County Chamber of Commerce. This will be an opportunity for the public to discuss proposed amendments to the Gateway Design Overlay District regulations. If you have any questions, please call the Planning Department at 893-6441.